Every year on this, the second Sunday of Easter, eight days after we celebrate Easter, we read this gospel, this gospel from John. And in the beauty of the revelation, the beauty of uh, the church's guidance in the year 2000, this Sunday was, <clears throat> was named Divine Mercy Sunday. And we recognize that mercy is wrapped up in this ability for the apostles and then who handed on to the bishops and the bishops who handed on to the priests to forgive sins. The greatest work of God in his resurrection in the celebration of Easter is the forgiveness of sins. But I want to point out two things about our readings this weekend. First off, notice that in in our gospel today, in, in, in the beginnings of the resurrection, we see that the disciples are gathered not in faith, not, not in joy, but in fear. We hear in, our, we hear in the gospel today, it says, when the, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. So the disciples, immediately after, the resur- after uh, his death, continue to gather in fear, not in faith, but in fear. And so they didn't have, they didn't have the Holy Spirit with them yet, and they didn't quite have the, the, the gumption to go out and to preach the gospel yet. They were still just kind of contained within themselves. But when we read our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, It says, a community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. And then it says, with great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And so we see this going from fear, gathering in fear and and holding up in fear and going back to the places that they know and and being in fear to this place where they leave that place of fear and go out into the world with great power. And the amazing thing about this is that it's the same Holy Spirit, it's the same power that you and I receive in the sacraments that we receive, and in a particular way, in our confirmations. In the sacrament of confirmation, we are built up with the Holy Spirit so that we can go out into the world. So we can go out with great power to profess and to proclaim Christ risen from the dead. And it's only because Christ is risen from the dead that there is this great power. Because Jesus himself says, I must go so that the spirit can come. And it's only in the resurrection that the sacraments are able to have their power. So that Christ can send the Spirit and that the Holy Spirit can do the work in the lives of every Christian throughout the world that receives the Spirit. And in a particular way, us who continue to gather in order to receive the Holy Eucharist and continue to receive the gift that God has given to us. We see that in this, on this, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, that we are not meant to keep this good news to ourselves but that we are meant to go out and to bring others to know this good news as well. And so we don't gather on Sunday mornings because we gather in fear and we're afraid of the world. We come to gather on Sunday mornings or Saturday nights in order to be strengthened to go out into the world, to bring the gospel into the world, into a world that so desperately needs the good news of Jesus Christ the good news that their sins have been forgiven. If you remember a few months ago, I talked about the four reasons that the Word became flesh. We can read about it in the Catechism, paragraphs 457, 458, 459, and 460. In paragraph 457, the very first reason that the Catechism gives that the Word became flesh was to reconcile sinners to the Father. The number one purpose that God becomes man, that God takes on flesh, dies for our sins, and rises from the dead, is so that we can receive the forgiveness of sins. 
But we have to make ourselves available to the sacrament in which our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven in the sacrament of baptism, where we are washed clean and we, are, and we begin that life in Christ when we share in the divine nature of our God. But we recognize that our sin separates us from God, especially mortal sin, separates us from God. And so we are in need of continuing to go back to restore that grace that we lose with mortal sin. And God establishes us for us the sacrament of confession, which is established in our gospel today. Jesus enters through the locked doors in his resurrected body. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven then, and whose sins you retain are retained. He gives the power to forgive and to hold back forgiveness to the apostles who then by laying on of hands pass that down to their successors who pass that down to the priests. And for 2,000 years we have been able to have our sins forgiven and be restored to that grace that we received initially in baptism But we have to recognize the power of the Spirit within us. The power of that forgiveness of sins to release us from the bondage that sin is. And so it's important for us to actually spend time to examine our conscience thoroughly. To actually go to those places in our heart that maybe we haven't thought of going to. Those places that need the light of Christ to be able to overcome even those habitual sins that we continue to commit. Maybe it's the sins that we're always going to confession for. Maybe we need to allow the light of Christ to shine in those areas of our heart in a brighter way so we can overcome those sins by the power of the forgiveness that God bestows upon us. The amazing thing about God's mercy is that he willingly gives it to us. He freely gives it to us. There's nothing we have to do to earn that grace. But we have to want it. We have to want to have our sins forgiven. We have to want to enter into that death with Christ, as St. Paul says, so we can rise with him. And rise with him in that newness of life that comes through the power of the resurrection. That death for us requires a certain humility to walk through that door of that confessional. A humility to recognize that I am a sinner. These are my sins and I am in need of God's forgiveness. Without that humility, we can't receive the mercy of God. We can't receive the fruits of the resurrection if we don't humble ourselves and die to ourselves so we can rise in Christ. And then when we do receive that grace and we are restored to that life in Christ, we can't keep it to ourselves. The joy of that forgiveness ought to well up within us so much that we are driven out into the world and we want to tell everybody about the good news of Christ's saving work within us. With that same power, that same Holy Spirit that the the apostles received in the Acts of the Apostles to go out and preach the gospel with great power, that's the same power that we have. And so we need to talk about God's forgiveness to everyone that we encounter so that they also can come to know Christ. And to know his forgiveness, to know him in the sacraments, to have that sure knowledge that our sins are forgiven and that we live in that divine nature with God. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us share that mercy of God with all that we encounter and go out into the world and bring others to know that mercy. But may we also receive that mercy on a regular basis. Not just waiting for Christmas and Easter, but to truly examine our conscience and to live in that mercy, even on a monthly basis, 
to receive God's mercy in the sacrament, to live in Christ fully, to give everything to him, humble ourselves in order to rise in Christ and live in that great power of the forgiveness of sins and that great power of the Holy Spirit to go into the world and bring others to know his mercy as well.